Hi guys and welcome to this the video on perpetuity. It's the final video for finance and recursion. Hopefully you've stuck with it and they have been useful. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. You're going where? I'm going Maths Guru. Yeah, that little thing down here. He says it in blue, which he means to do in highlighter. So let's try that one again. MathsGuru.com, where there are videos and downloadable notes and VCAR exam questions and so much more. Head over there and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. That'd be greatly appreciated. It just lets me know that actually people are watching. Okay, so uh, what's this lesson all about? Well, as I've said before, I'm not going to go through the learning objectives. They are pretty much there. Pause the video if you need to. But yeah, we're going to be dealing with the final part of this course on perpetuities. And it actually builds on the stuff we have done before. So in the previous example, we looked at interest only loans. And what was the biggest takeaway from that? Well, first thing that the value of N didn't really matter and that the principal value and the final value effectively stayed the same, except for a sign change. Why? Well, an interest only loan, you are only paying the interest. So what on earth is a perpetuity? Well, a perpetuity is, I don't know, like a big piggy bank. Um, Maybe you invest some money and you invest more and more and more and more and more and suddenly at some point you're going to live off the interest. That is my dream. I keep wishing to win the lottery. I'm thinking one day I'm going to win the lottery and live off the interest. I will sit and record maths guru videos all day long. Okay, that sounds actually torturous in many cases. I love doing the videos, but where would the social interaction come from? But anyway, a perpetuity is like... Well, basically that, a big bank account where you do nothing more than live off the interest. You've got so much money in there that the interest payment every single month is enough to live off. And an example that might apply to you if you are in a private school, for example, would be a scholarship. So scholarships are generally paid from a perpetuity. Someone will have left a significant amount of money or the school will have put all their money in their one account, for example, and it will pay out a certain amount of interest. And then they use that for a scholarship. Now, again, with a perpetuity, the most important thing to notice is that the principal value and the final value once again will stay the same except for a sign change and the value of N is largely useless. We can put one, 10, a million, it doesn't actually matter. So let's look at some tricks for perpetuities. And a lot of people think, oh, great, I'll be able to use my CAS calculator for everything that I do. And yes, maybe, yes, a CAS calculator for some of the questions will be helpful, but generally speaking, not helpful at all. All right, because again, they might not give you the principal value, in which case you won't know the final value and you won't know some in, uh, won't know uh, or won't have all the information for the financial solver. Right, what is the trick here? If you want to try and find the value of the perpetuity or the, the payment that's gonna come off the perpetuity, find the compounding interest rate percent, divide it by 100 and times it by V0, which in this situation will be the future value or the present value or whatever, because they're gonna be the same, okay? So the compounding interest rate, by that I mean, if I told you that I had, for example, 6% per annum and my perpetuity was compounding monthly, then obviously in that situation, I would do six divided by 12, which would give me that 0.5%. I would then put that in as there. So that would be 0.5. I would divide it by 100 and then I would multiply it by whatever was in my account, that perpetuity, 10, uh, perpetuity 10,000, 20,000 or whatever. It's very important though that you make sure that you use your compounding interest rate, not your annual interest rate, because that's where they're going to trick you. Calculate how much money will need to be invested in a perpetuity account, earning an interest of 4.8%. And again, if I go NIPV, PMT, FV, PPY slash CPY, what have I got here? Calculate, well, we've already said N doesn't matter. So I'm going to put N as one. I know my interest rate of 4.8%. Do I know my principal value? No, because it says how much money will need to be invested. And automatically, if I don't know the PV, I don't know my FV, and so the financial solver here is going to be useless to me. All right, but what it is giving me is it's giving me my payment. Ah, well, hold on. So if I rub all of this out at the moment, I know that my annual interest rate is 4.8%. Is it compounding annually? No, it's compounding monthly. So I'm now going to divide that by 12. So again, if I fire up my TI Inspire, he says, let me just actually bring up my TI Inspire. It's not going to show at this moment in time. All right, it's off screen at this moment. I'll work that out in a second. So if I add my calculator, fingers crossed, you should all be able to do 4.8 divided by 12. Lots of people are going, you can do that in my head. I know, but I don't want to make a mistake. So there is my monthly interest. Now, that 0.4% is creating 
the $300, but 0.4% of what? Well, my perpetuity, my investment. So 0.4% of my present value, my principal value, we don't know what it is, gives me that $300. And much like the questions we did before with the uh, interest only loans, if I now do 0.4 divided by 100 times, I don't know what my principal value is, so call it X and equal that to 300. Put that in a set of brackets with solve, comma, X. Lo and behold, out will come my answer. And again, let's see what I can do here. Solve. Uh, now this is off screen, guys. 0.4 divided by 100 uh, times by X equals 300, comma, X. Sorry that you can't see this. But if I put that into my calculator, my value of X comes out to be $75,000. All right, so again, the, the steps to this, and I can guarantee probably going to be some sort of a sack or an exam or what have you, but they've given you an annual interest rate. You've got to turn it into a, a line interest rate or a compounding interest rate, and then realize that that percentage of your principal value is going to create your payment for you, okay? Another example, yep, a university mathematics faculty has 30,000 to invest. All right, I don't know what's happening in my, uh... but now, hold on a moment, they've given me a PV. So I now have an FV of minus 30, one, two, three. What else do they give me? Well, N is equal to whatever we want it to be. Do they give me an interest rate uh, with interest down? What is the minimum interest rate? So we've got to find the minimum interest rate. Do they give me a PMT? Uh, yes, it's awarding a prize. They're giving money. So that's got to be $1,500 positive with interest earned. Okay, what does it say? Uh, what is the minimum interest rate that, that will allow this prize to be awarded indefinitely? Right, interest earning for this month in a perpetuity. Sorry guys, I'm mumbling because I'm trying to work out whether they give me a PPY or a CPY. The University of Mathematics for Faculty has 30,000 to invest. It intends to award an annual mass prize. There we go. So that was the trick there, annual. My PPY, CPY, is actually going to be one. Now, I really do need to fix my calculator, so bear with me. And there we go, we are back. <laughs> don't know what happened there. So what are we gonna do here? So I'm gonna go menu, eight one. And then what do we go? We've got my N is one, 30, one, two, three. Oh no, that's gonna be minus 30,000. Were you screaming at the screen? Hopefully you were, that's gonna be minus one, two, three, because they're investing it, they're giving away money. My 1,500. 30, one, two, three. Nope, try that one again. What am I doing? Let's try that one again. Let's put that down to zero for a moment. My principal value is minus 30, one, two, three. My payment is 1,500. And one, 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 one. So let's see what my interest rate comes out to be. And there we go, 5%. ka -ching. 5%. And I'm fairly happy that's gonna be a nice answer because it's come out as a whole value. So we can use the financial solver could I have done it in another way? Mm, probably. So if I go back here, they've given me that it was 1500 a year. That's my, uh, the, the money that's coming out. If I was to divide that by the 30, one, two, three, and times that by 100, let's just see what happens there. Let's crash out of the finance solver. 1500 divided by 30, one, two, three. There we go. Times that by 100 gives me 5% as well. So again, you don't always have to use the financial solver if you understand what is actually happening. Right, VCAR questions. These come up uh, every so often and they are there to trick people. I've seen them pretty much on every sack I've ever seen, uh, basically just to try and trick you. Sienna invest 420,000 in a perpetuity from which you will receive a regular monthly payment of $1,890. The perpetuity earns interest at a rate of 5.4% per annum. Determine the total amount in dollars that Sienna will receive after one year of monthly payments. Again, relatively simple question. She's getting $1,890 every single month. So my calculation there would be 1890 times by 12. Fire up my calculator. 1890 times by 12 gives me $22,000. $680. People say, do I have to show the calculation? No, not really. I don't think you get any marks for the calculations in VCAR exams. It's really for the answer only. Write down the value of the perpetuity after Sienna has received one year of monthly payments. So many people get this wrong. Why? Because they think that they then have to take the 420,000 and subtract the 22,680, but it's a perpetuity. You are living off the interest. So the principal value and the final value never changes. There will always, always, always be 
420,000 in that account. So the trick to that question was $420,000. $1,000. And that happens so often in exams and sacks. Sienna invests that $420,000 a perpetuity from which you will receive a regular monthly payment of 1890 The perpetuity earns interest rate at a rate of 5.4% per annum. Now again, the whole point of this exercise is, or these chapters, is that once you've got the financial solvent, not to forget the recurrence relation stuff because you're still going to need it. Let SN be the value of Sienna's perpetuity after N months. Complete the recurrence relation in terms of F0 uh, sorry, S0, S of N plus 1, S of N. That would model the value of this perpetuity. So I actually only want two boxes to be filled in. Pretty much everyone on the state, I should imagine, would be able to fill in that first box there. Because remember, it's S0. So I'm going to put in there 420, 1, 2, 3. Now, what has got to go in this next box here? Well, basically, my rate of interest. They've already put the minus 1890. I've got to put that. That's my capital R. So my capital R is 1 plus my little r on 100. What is my little r going to be? Well, it's 5.4% divided by, oh yes, uh, regular monthly payments. Because this is going month to month to month, I need to turn my annual interest rate into a monthly interest rate. So bring that up. So it's 5.4 divided by 12 gives me 0.45. So that's going to be 1 plus 0.45 divided by 100. Again, let's do that. So... Well, uh, 1 plus 0.45 divided by 100 gives me 1.0045. And that is the value that you should have put or would be expected to put in there. All right. So again, it's just linking that stuff together, but it's really repetitive. Yeah. Question 25 from the 2020 paper. A graph below represents the value of an annuity investment. Hmm. Now, interestingly, one of the things I didn't say before is that a perpetuity is a type of annuity, all right? So, mm, so there's an annuity investment in Tyler's after N time periods. And the trick to this question was noticing that the line here was horizontal. Now, again, remember that every single bank will pay interest, or particularly in the VCAR example, the examples you're going to deal with. So after one period, we would have got interest, but then for some reason, it's gone back to what we started with. It's gone up gone back to what we started with. Interest has been added, gone back to what we started with. Interest has added, gone back to what we started with. Hmm, hold on a moment. Sounds like a perpetuity. So you were expected to look at the idea there to go, ah, oh, straight line graph, perpetuity. So now which of these is going to give you the perpetuity? Well, we're all starting with $200,000 here. What do I notice? My interest rates are different and these payments are different. So what I was expected to do was work out which one of these, when I put 200,000 in, would give me 200,000 back out? So again, by that I mean, let's fire up my calculator. So if I look at the first interest rate, if I put 200, he says typing on the graphic as he does every time, 200, one, two, uh, three in there and hit enter. And they're gonna be 1.015, I'm gonna times that by my answer, and I'm gonna minus 2500. If I do that, do I end up with $200,000? No, I've ended up with $200,500. So in which case, that cannot be A. It cannot be A because what we notice is the graph is horizontal. So we do it again. Now, I don't need to do this. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. I don't need to do the $200,000 first. I can actually just go uh, the interest rate of 1.025 times 200, 1, 2, 3, and this situation minus 5,000. Hit enter. What do I get? Oh, hold on a moment. I'm back to 200,000. And so I think for this, part B would have been my correct answer. Let's just check the next one. 200, 1, 2, 3, marked it up by 1.03, minus 5,500. Hit enter. Nap. Not going to be better. 1.04 times 200, 1, 2, 3, minus 6, 1, 2, 3. Hit enter. Nope. And 200, 1, 2, 3. Uh, multiplied by 1.05 minus 8,000. So what I've done is work through each of those. And again, no. So have I done 200,000? So B would have to be the correct answer. Why am I checking the other answers? Just in case I've made a silly mistake. Samuel invests 500,000 in an annuity from which he receives a regular monthly payment. Now this was obviously a previous part of the question. We've now moved on to part C. They're going to try and trick you. The balance of the annuity in dollars in after n months can be modeled by a recurrence relationship given by 500,000 a of n plus 1 equals k a n minus 2,000. Now the first thing is 
They're deliberately trying to trick you by changing the letter because that's going to mess with your head. This value here they've now called K, but hold on a moment, that's in the place of my R, right? So if you go back to what my original formulas are, that's my value of R, and R has something to do with my interest rate. So for what value of K would this investment act as a simple perpetuity? Ah, oh, well, if it's a perpetuity, we're going to live off the interest. So this $2,000 is basically the interest from this $500,000. So if I now do 200, uh, sorry, 2,000 divided by 500, one, two, three, do that my calculator, let's fire it up. Uh, uh, two, one, two, three, divided by 500, one, two, three. Oh, I've done it again, sorry guys. Two, one, two, three, divided by 500, one, two, three. Hit enter, that's 0 0.004. Now it wants the value of K, so it doesn't want it as a percentage, it wants it in terms of a multiplier. So we've got 0 0.004. In that situation, I would actually just add the value of one to give me that K would be 1.004, all right? I don't need to turn this 200,000 into a percentage to then return it back into a decimal. In that situation, K would be 1.004. And just to check, and again, I'm gonna check. If I now do 500, oh, come on. If I do 500, one, two, three, I'm gonna multiply that by 1.004, and I'm gonna subtract two, one, two, three. If this has worked and it gives me 500,000, I know I've got the correct answer. So again, if you, at the end of an exam and you've got time, you should always go back and just check, or even at the time you're doing it. Phil invests 200,000 in an annuity from which he receives a regular monthly payment. This is from 2019. A balance of the annuity in dollars after n months can be modeled by this recurrence relation. If the payment received each month by Phil had been a different amount, the investment would have acted as a simple perpetuity. What monthly payment could he receive? Well, at the moment, his monthly payment is $3,700. But for it to be a perpetuity, we'd want to be looking at this multiplier here, this 1.0035 times by the 200,000. So if I do 1.0035 times 200, 1, 2, 3, I am going to get 200,000 and $700. Well, if it's going to be a perpetuity, we're just going to take out what the excess is from the $200,000. And so in this, that situation, I would say that his monthly payment should be $700, right? So again, the 200,000 times the 1.0035, and then work out what the difference is from that. And there we go. Believe it or not, there's the end of this video on perpetuities and in fact the end of this section of the course. Hopefully it has been useful. My name is Darren from Maths Guru. Please head over to YouTube and subscribe if you can. Again, it just lets me know that people are watching and I am deeply, deeply grateful to know that people are watching. I will be kicking off other videos later on and they're all on MathsGuru.com. But until I see you in another video, please take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.